In this session, we will discuss about irreducible set of functional dependency. Now, what does it mean? In a given set of functional dependency, if there exists a redundant element, then that element must be eliminated. Now, what do you mean by redundant element? A redundant element is that wherein the presence or the absence of that element do not affect the capability of the functional dependency. That element is called as the redundant element. And such type of redundant element must be eliminated. So, how do we eliminate this type of redundant elements? So, basically, we have three cases of redundancy. Considering an FD alpha determines beta, we have three cases. Case 1, looking at this FD, we have the left hand side and the right hand side. So, redundant element can be on the right hand side. If it is on the right hand side, then you eliminate it. The second case is, the redundant element can be on the left hand side. If it is on the left hand side, then you eliminate it. And the third case is, that is the entire FD can be a redundant. So, basically three cases of redundancy are possible. Either the element is redundant on the right hand side or the element is redundant on the left hand side or the element is or the entire FD is redundant. We will look at a problem and try to find out how to eliminate this redundant element. We have a relation over here R where the elements are W, X, Y, Z. Given three FDs, X gives us W, W, Z gives us X, Y, Y gives us W, X, Z. So now the first thing over here is, what we can do is, we can apply the decomposition rule to this particular FD and get a single element on the right hand side. So when we apply the decomposition rule to the right hand side, we have this set of FDs, X gives us W, W, Z gives us X, W, Z gives us Y, Y gives us W, y gives us x and y gives us z. As of now what we have done is on the right hand side we have got only a single element. Now the next step is calculating the closure on each of the element. In the previous case we have seen we have got 6 FDs now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now what we have to do is we have to find out the closure on each and every FD. But when we calculate the closure on each and every FD, there are two cases. You calculate the closure considering that that particular FD is there in the set of FDs and in the second case you avoid that particular FD and still calculate the closure on it. So, we move to the first FD, that is X gives us W. We calculate the closure. So when we calculate the closure, what we get is X W. Now we make an assumption that this particular FD is not there. As of now, it is not there. And then again we calculate the closure on the same FD. So now when we calculate the closure on the same FD, referring to the other FDs, the closure on X is X. So what we get is the presence and the absence of that particular FD gives us two different outputs. That means this particular FD is not a redundant and is required in the set of FDs. So this we will be considering when we calculate the closure on other FDs. We move on to the next FD now. W, Z. Closure on W, Z is W, Z, X, Y and when we avoid this particular functional dependency the closure will be W, Z, Y, X. So 
So the presence of this FD and the absence of this FD does not give us any different output. That means our conclusion in this case is that FD number 2 is a redundant and has to be eliminated. So now this particular FD since it is redundant we won't be considered anymore in the future computations. So we exclude this FD and we move on to the third functional dependency. Again we follow the same procedure, calculate the closure on WZ which gives us WZYX and when we ignore this and again calculate the closure what we get is WZ. So here the output is different, here the output is different. That means this particular FD is not redundant. We move on to the next FD. So this is, will be considered, uh, this also will be considered. We move on to the next FD that is Y gives us W. Closure on Y gives us W, X, Z, Y and when we ignore this and we calculate the closure what we get is X, Z, W. So in this case, gives us the same result. So this also, so this FDE becomes a redundant, and it cannot be used for for the computation. We move on to the next FD, that is FD number five, and we calculate the closure on Y now. Closure on Y is equals to X. Z, W, Y and when we ignore this and we again calculate the closure, the closure is Y, Z. So again it gives us a different output that means this FD is not redundant and can be considered. Moving on to the last FD, Y gives us Z. So we calculate the closure again on Y. So now it gives us y, z and we ignore and again calculate the closure on y. It gives us y, x, w. So again the output is different that means it is not a redundant and has to be considered. So what we have done is as of now we have considered each and every fd. And we were trying to see whether the presence or the absence of that particular FD makes any difference on the entire FD. So whichever were redundant FDs, we have already eliminated it. So as of now, we see we have seen that after applying the decomposition rule on the right hand side, this is the set of FDs that we have got. We saw that FD number 2 and FD number 4 were redundant elements. So after eliminating those FDs, what we get is this set of FDs. So what I have done is I have applied the union rule over here and I have combined FD number 3 and FD number 4 as one. Well. I have shown it as only 3 FDs. So basically the output as of now is this. So what we have done is our elimination of the element on the right hand side is done. Now we move to eliminate the redundant elements on the left hand side. Now we won't touch attribute number 1, attribute number 3 and FD number 1, FD number 3 and FD number 4 because there is only a single element on the left hand side. So what we require is only this particular FD. Now the first thing is what we will do over here is we will calculate the closure on this particular FD, closure on WZ. So when we calculate the closure on WZ, what output do we get? We get it as W, Z, Y and X. Next, what we have to do is we have to take each element and calculate the closure on it. So when we calculate the closure on W, the output that we get is 
W. So when we calculate the closure on W, we do not consider this FD. And then we calculate the closure on Z. So when we calculate the closure on Z is get Z. So now our conclusion over here is this gives us a different output, this gives us a different output, this gives us a different output. So now we can say that neither W nor Z is a redundant element. But in case if WZ and W had the same output, then we could say that Z is a redundant So when we calculate the closure on WZ, the output is something else. When we consider only one element, the output is different. And when we consider the other element, the output is different. If WZ, closure on WZ and closure on W was the same, then we could avoid the next attribute. So finally, after eliminating all the redundant elements, this is the set that we get. The set of FDs with, without redundant elements.